Hello, I am Radagast at your service. And this is the first of something I'm going to be calling Mystic View. Or the Mystic View, but I like Mystic View. And I'm being as you know, I'm on I do the Goldfish Report three times a week. And um, I'm very content to kind of just put in a, put in my my few words uh, where it's applicable. Um, it's really about the guests and the ambassador. And of course, Louisa does a really good, really good job of tying it together, keeping a narrative flowing and kind of keeping it, uh, communicable. I'm not sure that sometimes some of the places I go are always communicable for everybody. Some people really like what I say. And some people, uh, might go, I might go over their head or it just doesn't do the right thing for them. So anyway, that's what the mystic view is for. The mystic view is for me to kind of have an opinion on things that I guess would have a world, uh, a world view about what's happening in the world, like what's, you know, where people meet people. Um, but tying it into the things, you know, that might have to do with other dimensions or, and energies without the focus so much on them. You know, it's really about what we're doing on the planet in our three dimensional bodies but observing that behavior from a more in a, a more enlightened and maybe what some might refer to as a fourth dimensional perspective. And so the topic I really would like to pick this week is the what has happened since the full moon that occurred on the weekend that they had the big um, UN meeting, the one that the that the Pope was at, and of course the Pope was. Visiting places in America, kind of like the, the Pope's tour week, but uh, that was a huge week. And in review, looking at it um, basically a month later, a lot has happened. Um, the mystic's view of the moon cycles is a bit of, you know, what they do. There's a, there's a, from the new moon to the full moon is a building cycle. While I was away, we were at our gathering um, that weekend. And I have a picture that I'm going to show because it's applicable. I got my hair cut, trimmed. And one of the reasons I was glad to get my hair trimmed there, besides the fact that I had a really good hairdresser to do it, was it was just as the moon was coming full. Now I'm 62. My hair isn't quite as thick and lustrous, and certainly the color isn't there like it used to be. So um, I like to partake of the fact that cutting one's hair on a growing moon actually uses certain energies to, like in other words, what your hair is doing as it gets stimulated because it's being cut. The kind of cosmic energy of that moment is one of growing. So when my hair is stimulated, I want it to be stimulated under um, the growing influence of the moon because it's good for healthy hair and a full head. And, you know, again, in my 60s, I, I mean, I, you know, what, I've gotten used to having hair on my head, and I like it that way. So, but we were coming up to the full moon. So that kind of means that we were then going to have two weeks of what normally follows a full moon. It's, the, it's good, like if you were going to fast, let's say one was going to fast. The, if you were going to try to use the moon as a helper, you would wait until after the full moon when the moon was coming down or getting smaller. That would be a good energetic time to assist your fast. I'm not saying, you can fast any day of the week. Uh, if you, the key word was assist. Similarly, I could cut my hair any day of the week or any time of the month. Chances are I wouldn't go bald. But I know what kind of energy I want to impart in it. And part of magical living I don't mean doing magic. Magical living is living in 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 um, in harmony and actually riding the the currents that blow through our existence at a um, more mystical level. Let's use the word mystical a few times yeah, in this little video. So I'm going to screen share. It's one of the reasons why I'm using Zoom instead of my normal Windows Movie Maker because I wanted to bring up this picture. Now this picture here is me blowing a flute 
because I didn't have a shofar. Actually, and I do have a shofar. It's a small one. It's meant to be carried around, and I didn't pack it. I don't travel much many anymore. And it makes a really um, piercing sound. That's kind of the real note I like to get from it. And um, I'm not blowing it too loud because it, it is it is 5.30 in the morning here and um, I do have neighbors. So I didn't have, I didn't have a shofar, but I had a flute and I had the intent. And we were pointing, we were in New Jersey across the bay where the ferries kind of come from New York and, and back. And so, we were all looking in the direction of New York and the UN. Can't see the New Yen, uh, uh, um, the UN, because it's a little further north. It's on the east side, and we're we're looking more towards the west side of Manhattan. And so that's that's Louisa there at my left hand side, and on my right hand side, somebody I made music with on that night. And um, I really love the fact that he's there because I was blowing that show far with some serious intention. Now, one of the things a shofar is, is good for is blowing uh, is to f chase dark energies. Some might call it evil spirits. Some might call it demons. They, you know, they're just the things that th this, the whole idea of the shofar is that being, um, it's a bit of a, a little bit of a, a magical instrument. But not only does it, is, is the shofar to chase away um, the troublemakers, but it's also to hearten um, the ones who are not troublemakers, the good, the good people, the ones who are who we can who are working for humanity. And uh, there was like a, a, a thing I, f I forget the number. I think I pl I played um, eight long ones, six short ones, and then um, seven long ones. Uh, it's just a little pattern that I learned from the ambassador. And if I have the numbers wrong, he'll tell me about it. But um, so anyway, that the shofar was blown that day. And of course, this was like in the middle of everything. This was, I think that this was on Saturday. All right, this was on Saturday. So I'm going to stop the share. We can, we don't need to look at me anymore. And I blew that with real intent. So I think that, that weekend, I mean, a lot of people spoke, but the kind of the superstars were the Pope, President of the United States, Barack Obama, President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, Putin and um, the President of China, Xi Jinping. And I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, the Pope was a disappointment if you can read between the lines and kind of know what, uh, what he has the power to do and isn't doing. So he was kind of a disappointment. That's okay. Um, I think he's going, you know, he has a choice of how relevant he wants to be in the world that's coming. Barack Obama embarrassed himself ter terribly and he embarrassed, embarrassed any thinking um, American. Vladimir Putin <clears throat> kind of was perfect for a full moon because he kind of gave a summary of what has been going on in the world these recent years and just how dysfunctional it's become. And um, he didn't quite name names, but he kind of pointed fingers. And he kind of um, let people, put up people on notice that things were going to change that the things the way they were were not going to be tolerated anymore. And then President Xi um, put together a really beautiful speech, one of coming together, working together, win-win scenarios. And it was a sincere speech. Matter of fact, I really think um, everybody kind of was completely sincere and upfront. I think the Pope um, said what he felt comfortable saying, I think Barack Obama, um, if he was, if he didn't speak his heart, 
he was certainly sincere in pleasing the people who gave him that speech. Um, Putin meant when he said, and Xi meant when he said, and they have a, they have a better plan for where we're going. And I think it's important to realize that no matter what the plans are, everything this is everything now has to be a bit of a transitionary plan, where people might go, "Oh, I heard it, but I wasn't that impressed." Fine, but it is a movement in the right direction. And it's right now we're kind of the transition is part of the journey of where we're all going. And I think so. That was on the very end of September. I think it was the twenty eighth. It's not important. All I know is that two days later the bombing campaign against the troublemakers in Syria, the people who were threatening the sovereignty of the Syrian state, that bombing campaign began with the invitation by the sovereign nation of Syria to Russia. So Russia was there legally. Something that has forgotten, forgotten that there actually are certain legal precedents and they come out of the, um, out of the UN. And in many ways, what uh, Putin has, was kind of saying is we're going to start making this place be what it's supposed to be. So does um, President Putin's throwing the trash out of Syria mean that, um, that the UN has changed? No, the UN is changing. Again, this is transition. This isn't black or white. This is, that, uh, that, this is the morphing period where we change from one thing into another. And in the process, uh, and in that middle change, things are not going to look like the way we might ideally hold the vision for what the future looks like. So, of course, our job is to hold that vision, because as you know, as you think, things become. Um, we should, you know, holding the vision as as a mass consciousness will bring it about. Participation in the formation of what comes in the future um, is called for from every every citizen. Of course, some won't speak, but, you know, we, if you like the idea of at least some kind of sovereignty, some kind of respect, you're going to have to, rep you're going to have to represent. You're going to actually have to have something to say. And it has to be intelligent. It can't be just emotional ramblings. A lot of people speak from their emotions. And it's good to know what your emotions are. You want to know how you feel, but you want to examine how you feel with your mind to make sure that you're not just stuck somewhere. And, um, and then when you represent, you want to represent with having done some work on how you feel and how you think, getting it all together so that when you speak, you speak with some meaning and some clarity and other people can understand the ideas you're presenting. Because actually, what we need to do is we need to present ideas, not how we feel about ideas, how we're feeling at the moment, what has upset us, what will make us happy. We can, our ideas can have what will make us happy, but they have to be ideas and they have to be clear. So that, that weekend, and once the moon started paring down, what happened was some of the nonsense in the world started to be, started to be peeled away. Um, the fact that the West, the West led kind of by the US, the UK, and the other cast of characters that get involved, the vassal states of the EU, and we have to call them vassals, they may not stay vassals, but they currently are. No question about it. Uh, they're dogs on leashes. That group, um, their, their complicity in the problems, including the refugee problem that they're suffering, that complicity has, been, has started to peel away. And that's part of a new moon going, um, going smaller, the waning moon. That kind of, you know, that kind of peeling away, just like you see the peeling away of the moon, all that the veneer of um, being the good guys in Syria was peeled away. And then we, we also have um, President Xi, and if you're following anyone he's doing, you know, that silk, uh, one road, one belt, the silk road. And a lot of people just feel like, oh yeah, this is a this is just another trap to get caught in, uh, caught up in. It's not a it, it is not a trap. It's actually one of the greatest uh, new plans in many ways, following an old plan. Basically, 
there's there's a a very mercantile uh, nature to the Chinese nation. I mean, there's a lot of other things, but there's a kind of like let's do commerce, let's do trade, and, and it goes back a very long time. So if we all, many of you might have run your own business, but anyone who has kind of knows that if you have a business, if you're running something and you want to do good, you need people with disposable income to be able to give to you in that, you know, because you offer something of value. So they offer you right now, the, the manner of exchange in most cases is money. So you need people with money to have a good business. Can't have a bunch of broke asses running around. So what you need to do is empower people. And that's exactly what the Silk Road intends to do. It intends to create a, a belt, a road of commerce, and then it intends to lend the money, and, I'm, and not at the normal punitive rates, to people to build up things and put in infrastructure along this belt so that they can benefit from what can run along it and what they can contribute to it. Because that's the whole idea of kind of like this. It's almost like being along, along a blood vessel or a major artery in, 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 a, in the body where there's a certain amount of putting into the bloodstream to, pu to put it to another point, to another organ, or pulling out of the bloodstream as you need it. And that's really, really, you know, a, a, a road of commerce is like a blood vessel. And it, within it, it carries the things that have, are coming down, that other people have inserted on it. Some will be pulling out, some will be putting back in, and it continues on its way. And then there's a return trip. And this is what's being built, a real circulatory system for Eurasia. And the, somebody recently saw a plan that the Russians had an idea for a highway built from St. Petersburg, which is basically, you know, all the way over there in Europe. And it would run across Asia, I guess, go whatever the furthest land point is on, um, on, on, on the end of Russia. I don't know if that's a Kamchatka Peninsula or not. And then kind of cross the Bering Strait, hitting into, I guess, the Aleutian Isles or some part of Alaska. And then that road would continue through to New York, St. Petersburg to New York. Okay. So we've crossed an ocean. We've crossed the Pacific Ocean up, up at the narrow part of the Bering Strait, crossed all of America, and we're back across your, uh, New York looking across at Europe. So only the Atlantic Ocean wasn't crossed. This is something that was proposed. Um, that somebody saw uh, when they were visiting Russia. So you have that, I mean, right now, right now that has, that's, I guess, something that's still like in the planning stages, but it's an idea that they'd like to see happen. So you have, you know, you have Russia wanting to, to tie in St. Petersburg with New York via a continuous highway. And then you have China wanting to basically start at the Pacific Ocean in Eastern China, running all across, you know, I guess, the, you know, more, more of the southern part of Asia. And they'd like it to go as far as Lisbon, Portugal, which once again, we, you take it to the Atlantic Ocean and there's just no more, any more to go. Just like with the Russians going to New York, you hit an ocean, there's no more to go. These are grand plans for humanity. And each one of these isn't just meant for traffic. It's meant for interconnecting. It's meant for humanity to be able to dance, play, work, and trade with each other. Because war is a waste of money. War is something that kind of got into our heads from the parasitic energies that um, plague mankind. And um, I think we've gotten to a point now where more and more people, and not just the humans, I mean, the, the growth of our human consciousness is ha affecting every human. And some people are disregarding it, some people are actually getting worse because of it, and, but a lot of us are growing. And it isn't just the common people. People like President Putin and President Xi are being affected positively by this. They are getting a similar picture that the rest of us do. And they're realizing war is a waste, um, and it only benefits a few. 
And that just leaves a mess that you always have to deal with, where if you do things right, you don't have a mess. I mean, certain people will always be dysfunctional, but not populations, not whole countries. And of course, how properly empowered people will deal with their own local dysfunction, however they see fit, and I'm quite sure in a most humanitarian way. So things are really going well um, overall as far as the direction. There will, again, we're in a transition period. Um, and even the country, like even if I'm saying, you know, Putin as, as the head of Russia is a benevolent person doing good things. Is he perfect? Of course not. There will be no perfect, there will be no perfect people. But the thing is, is he, do I think he's a good person with good spirit and good spiritual um, uh, promptings? Oh, yes. I think he has very strong and very good spiritual promptings. Um, and I think he has the metal, that's two T's, M-E-T-T-L-E, -T -T -E, to represent that spirituality and even defend it. Um, do I think Xi is a perfect man? No, again, no perfect people, but I think he has really good ideas. And I think this is, um, you have to know a little bit about the biography of Xi and I won't get into it necessarily. Um, but he is, his parents made sure that he kind of understood how common people live, even though he kind of grew up in the communist party and was not, a, was hardly a nobody, but his, um, his, I think specifically his father wanted him to know people. And he did spend some time in America. And when he, when he came to America, he was recounting his experiences with common people and how much that kind of gave him a direction in life. And, uh, and basically, I think what, setting common people free to do something productive um, and interact with each other is kind of what we're seeing in this transition stage. And in the transition stage, there's going to be people who are not with the program. There's going to be people in the Communist Party who don't like this. But fortunately, the person heading up things is on board with the rest of us to build a better world. Putin has a serious problem in, um, in Russia with people they call the fifth column. A lot of people in the NGOs, a lot of people in the media. The fact that they still have a central bank that has the normal parasites in it is another thing that has to be dealt with. And I know that is in the plans. But none of this is just, it, is, it isn't, none of this is that easy. And it takes staying on course. And, um, and by staying on course, you get to your destination. And we will get to that destination. So there's a lot of cleanup that's going to be going on. There's going to be a lot more waning moons to peel away a lot more of the problems. Uh, and there will be, but the mystic view of what's going on in the world is something that's very good. And I know there's certain people who just, you know, they keep on, and the bricks, same boss, same, you know, new boss, same as the old boss. That's a meme. And of course, we picked it up from Pete, Pete Townsend, wrote that into a song, won't get fooled again. But again, you know, he was talking about much more of the Western system, like where we're looking at, you know, here come presidential elections next year. This is where you, where the new is the same. The new is the same. It's a system. The system produces what it produces um, and it produces more of the same. It's a sick system. It produces more sickness. Um, it's kind of like a, a metastasis where what, what comes off of a cancer cell, more cancer cells. So this is, this is going to be a process, but the BRICS nations represent a, something new on the planet, something that is better than we're experiencing, so it is an improvement. The AIIIB, the Asian Invest, uh, Infrastructure Investment Bank, is meant to do business in a very different manner and actually using the money to build things that will benefit everybody and not buy political influence. Now, of course, when you're a good person, you're helping people out, sure. I mean, people remember favors, there's no question. That's all, that's, but that's, that's, not, that's part of humanity. Humanity looks to the people who take care of them. And, that, and then when, if there comes a time you can take care of somebody, you kind of 
don't even so much feel indebted as so much as you'd like to. I mean, good people like to return the favor. That's how decent human beings work. That's part of our deeper spiritual human culture. Uh, I know some people think, oh, we're warlike. Let me tell you, we're not warlike as a species. We're warlike when we're infected with this parasitic energy that's on the planet. I even think that a lot of our ancient history has been tampered to make us look far more warlike and dysfunctional than we really were. <laughs> Excuse me. There seem to be all kinds of indications of golden ages in a really good time. And I think uh, a big part of what broke that apart was the parasitic energy and um, coming in at a time where the collective human immune system wasn't quite ready to resist it. Um, we've kind of been sick with this parasite for a long time, this virus, this mind virus, this spirit virus, and now it hasn't killed us, so now we're starting to um, mount an immune response, and we will deal with it, and we will return to health. And um, anything else? Yeah, I just, like, I just would like, to, from the mystic view is Putin is working for a better planet, President Xi is working for a better planet. BRICS is a good concept, even though some of its countries are still dysfunctional. Um, but that's not, that's part of the process. You start somewhere. And a lot of people, that's, I think with a lot of the new age community, one of the reasons why they're not more active is they're always waiting for another piece of information. Some whistleblower is going to give us something or they're waiting for a disclosure. They're always waiting for something instead of just starting now with what we have. And that's why I applaud the BRICS nations and China, India, uh, Russia, South Africa and Brazil. They weren't perfect and they didn't wait to be perfect. They didn't wait to have everything. They decided to start now with what they have. And they'll, they'll, if it's going to be a little bit sloppy, that's okay. Making mistakes is one of the ways how you make things better. And um, so I just really, the mystic view is that we are, the world is a better place and that the full moon and that, and that, that meeting at the UN last at the end of September was the beginning of something very, the, the, the end of something or the ending of something and the beginning of something better. And of course, part of that was building up to have the strength, and then there's also the ripping down of the existing structure. But even that is done is being done transitionally because you can't create vacuums. You don't really want to destroy, and much of what's happening isn't so much a tearing down, is building new systems and making the old ones either obsolete by not playing, or they can join when they're ready. But the thing is, nobody's holding us back anymore. We're moving forward. And I would like a big shout out to the Awake and Aware community who think that visiting forums and looking for that one answer that they need is nothing but a rabbit hole. And, and I mean, we've all spent time down rabbit holes. It's time to come up, brush off the rabbit shit and get to work. Um, and, and what we see is that's what people like Putin, Xi, BRICS nations, a lot of people are doing. The global mission of peace is another thing that's not waiting for things to be perfect to get started. So I think that might close it. I think that'll be my first mystic view. I do hope at some point that I might have some interesting friends um, to come on, people you've probably never heard of um, that I think are capable of, of, of joining in a good conversation and knocking, knocking a few ideas back and forth, kind of like a ping pong ball and seeing what we come up with. And that way you don't have, just have to listen to me. But we'll see how that goes. Um, I have a few people I'd like to talk to and we'll see if it, if it works out. But I guess I'll just make this um, mystic view number one. And I do intend to make them. I have no regular schedule. If I develop one, I'll follow it. And if I don't, I'll just look for the time because I am very busy with Global Mission of Peace. Global Mission of Peace is really taking off really going places. I will be going places. Um, of course, with a network world, no matter where your body is, as long as you have your equipment with you, it's showtime. And it is showtime in more ways than one. And um, so anyway, I'm going to close now and thank you all for tuning in 
And this will be on my ModWiz 125 channel, of course, because that's where you're going to find it. Although I might plant it around a few other places. So thank you for being with me. Remember, source yourself in your spirit. Um, I like the phrase of the world is in God's hands and God's hands are at the end of all our arms. So let's get to work. Namaste. Namaskar. Be well.